Hey guys, this is Ben. In today's video, you know, I was wondering, do figs taste better ripened in the sun or in a greenhouse? Today, I actually want to cover a couple things. I want to cover um, how figs ripen, what you can do about helping them ripen, and then whether or not figs would taste better ripened in the greenhouse or outside in the sun. Now, I'm sure that if you've done any kind of research, you've probably heard that figs do not ripen when uh, you pick them too early or pick them green off of the tree. However, you probably even have heard you know, either an aunt, uncle, cousin, or on the forum somewhere that <clears throat> you can pick figs green and they'll ripen on the counter. So what's the answer to that? Okay, so what's the truth behind picking figs green? So technically, both accounts are true. Now, figs are scientifically known as what are uh, climateric types of fruit. That include bananas, tomatoes, apples, peaches. And what that means is Climateric fruits will ripen off of the tree. Now it depends. If you picked a fig that was green, it's not gonna ripen. If you pick a fig that is somewhat soft, starting to turn color, and the sugars are starting to concentrate in it, then it will ripen on the counter. Okay, so what's the difference, right? So why do they ripen on the counter? Well, technically, what it is is Fruits have what is called ethylene gas, and ethylene gas is actually what makes a fruit ripen. So in 1901, a Russian scientist by the name of Dmitry Nujabal, uh, he discovered that plants were being affected by these gas that were leaking out of a gas main, and the vapors were causing the surrounding plants to grow up normally. Now, three decades later, Three decades later, researchers found that plants not only responded to ethylene gas, but they can actually produce their own. And the production of ethylene gas is what causes a number of different things to change within a plant. Re later, researchers discovered that ethylene gas actually caused seeds to germinate. Uh, they prompted leaves to change color. Uh, they triggered petal f uh, flower petals to die. Um, and fruits to ripen. Now because the fruit, the ethylene gas actually uh, travels really easily between the cell tissue of the plant, uh, it, it worked as a, a warning signal for the plant whenever the plant was damaged, you know, changes in the environment, heat, whether it was cut, um, and it activated the plant's appropriate responses. So in a sense, uh, these plants were actually signaling within the plant itself and also the surrounding plants around it. You may have heard that to ripen a certain fruit, you want to put you know, your unripened whatever it is along with like a banana or a, an apple in a shoebox and it'll help to ripen that fruit and that's because of ethylene gas. So maybe, just maybe, if you took a ripening fig plant and put it next to another fig plant that was close to ripening, it could signal that other fig plant to you know, produce more ethylene gas and ripen its fruit. Have you ever heard of crown shyness? So crown shyness is actually a phenomenon within trees, uh, more specifically within the same species of trees where they'll grow a canopy and the canopy won't touch the other tree. So they'll create these gaps, these channeling gaps between the trees. And um, basically what that does is it protects that tree from any type of disease or insect or anything that could be transferred to the other tree. Basically what that means is the communication between trees is possible. They actually do talk. So let's talk about a couple of uh, ideas that you can actually execute yourself to help your fig tree ripen your fruit. So the first one is actually pinching the top of the trees. Um, there's a couple times you can actually pinch the top of fig trees. 
and the first time is actually within the spring time frame where you can pinch the top take a look at that there just take that and pinch it off in the springtime and what that will do is actually trigger the plant to grow more lateral shoots for one and the two trigger it to actually um, produce the fruit now the second time you want to pinch the uh, the fig tree it's actually during the summer around this time frame and we're in august right now um, and you'll see that the figs are uh, somewhat green now you want it to concentrate on putting the energy into the fruit versus the energy into the growth of the tip of the uh, the branches and so you can take this branch and pinch it uh, I'm not going to do that yet with this tree I actually want it to grow a little bit taller but you can pinch that and basically what that does is it'll trigger the plant to then produce uh, again more energy actually not produce but put more energy into the fruit versus growing the uh, the vegetation. Now the other thing you can actually do um, to speed up the process of uh, fig ripening is actually pick off the smaller figs that you know are not going to ripen in time. So you know they're tiny and you're already in you know mid-August, end of August, go ahead and pluck off those little ones. They're usually found at the tips of the, at the branches. And another method that other folks have used is to take some oil to, and dab a little bit of the oil right onto the eye of the fig. And supposedly, this actually uh, speeds up the ripening process as well. So you take a little bit of olive oil, it's a new bottle. Put that a little bit on your finger. Now this is my Noir de Barbantine. All I'm gonna do is just dab the eye of that. Okay, and then compared to the other three that, on, that are on this tree right now, it should ripen a little bit faster. Okay, so this is my Genovese Nero. I brought this guy outside um, to ripen versus putting it in the greenhouse and ripen, and it's definitely ready to go. That looks nice and ripe and juicy. And I also have a brand new one that I get to try out today. Uh, this one was known as a Calderwood Unknown. However, I do believe, well, that's a beautiful fig, that um, some folks have identified this as actually an LSU tiger. Okay, now that we've pulled off three figs from the trees today, these have all ripened in the sun. So, one, what I did was I grouped all of the ripening figs together, and then two, I took the greenhouse figs outside to ripen. So in this sense, my theory or my hypothesis, or probably not even hypothesis because it's probably real simple, figs that ripen out in the sun are going to taste better than figs that ripen in the greenhouses. It's what I, I believe and what most people probably agree to. Okay, now let's go ahead and weigh these guys. Genovese Nero, I've already tried one um, a couple of weeks ago. And it was not as good as I thought it was going to be. Um, I gave it a, a lower score than, I, I, than it deserves. But this one was ripened outside. This one is 55 grams for the Genovese Nero. Calderwood Unknown, or probably also known as uh, LSU Tiger. 33.5. Okay, let's cut it open and see what it looks like from the inside. We'll start with the Calderwood LSU Tiger. Wow, that is nice. Beautiful. Pink and jammy. Floria. This is something we've already tried. So I'm not going to actually review the Floria, but I am going to eat it. And then the Genovese Nero. All right, take a look at this. Look at that. Genovese Nero, Floria, and the LSU Tiger slash Calderwood Unknown. Okay, so now for the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and try out the Genovese Nero. Sun ripened versus greenhouse ripened. This came from the same tree as the one I had previously. Okay. Oh, oh, oh my God. Wow. 
huge, huge, huge difference. This one is jammy, it's syrupy. It's got some uh, strawberry, strawberry jam-like flavors. A lot richer and uh, has a good bite to it. That's delicious. So to answer the question, yes. Figs ripen outside tastes way better than figs ripen in the greenhouse. Okay, this is the LSU Tiger. Sold to me as Calderwood Unknown. So give this guy a try. Oh man. Wow, that's good. That's good. I like it even better than the uh, Genovese Nero. Slightly sweeter. There's more of a freshness about it versus this one where it is so syrupy. Kind of gets stuck in your throat and chokes you up a little bit. This one is very good. From what I've read, it's actually uh, relatively cold hardy as well. Um, this tree has been growing pretty much outside all summer, so I haven't even had it in the greenhouse. And it's uh, giving me ripe fruit on its first year. What a great fig. Delicious. Very, very delicious. Um, I'm just going to eat this Floria. It's begging to be eaten. Mm. This thing has been on the tree long enough to give it kind of that uh, dried figgy uh, taste about it. Still very good. All right, you guys. Well, thanks again for tuning in. Um, you know, hopefully you've learned something today about how to ripen your fig trees and pop to, sorry, how to ripen your fig fruit and uh, apply it to the trees in your garden. Well, if you like it, please subscribe. See you next time. Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye.